This video is brought to you by Motion VFX. Well, I have had the new 2021 MacBook Pros for about two weeks now, so I think I have a pretty good feel for them at this point. And as a creative professional and content creator, I have been loving, of course, the 16 inch with the M1 Max for its size and power. But as a student, I have been more drawn towards the 14 inch, which offers, of course, a cheaper price, but also a more approachable portable form factor. But the question remains, should anybody, specifically a student, buy something this expensive? So what makes this MacBook attractive to most students? And notice how I'm not overexposed? It's because I'm shooting on my iPhone. <laughs> First and foremost, this new display. I have gotten compliments about just this screen on this laptop. People don't even know what it is or what it's called or how many nits it has, but everyone's like, wow, that's really cool. Like the sides are skinny and it just looks like bigger. And it is, it's 14 inches. It's really nice just to work on. I mean, I have been using a 13.3 inch display for years with all my MacBook Pros and Airs that I've ever owned, but having the extra inch here <laughs> is nice. And not only that, it's brighter and it's more contrasty and it has a 120 Hertz refresh rate, which really does make a difference when you're scrolling around and multitasking and like it makes it so much more enjoyable to use sort of like the iPad Pro. You don't necessarily need it, but it's very nice here. And something else that comes with the display is the notch and that's not necessarily a feature, but it does come with a feature and that is a better front facing camera. Um, and if you know, we're on Zoom a lot. You know, we're on Zoom. And if you are a business student like me, you're gonna be on like WebEx and other stuff if you're recruiting. So you wanna have a nice built in webcam. And this is definitely better than years past. You know, that's not potato quality anymore. It's a step up, it's like French fry quality, you know, but it's still, you know, noticeably better here. And also, too, a feature of the notch is, or I guess a sort of implication of the notch is, you know, when you're in full screen applications, it still looks like you have a bezel, but when you hover your mouse over where that bezel used to be, now you have menu items and your full screen content really isn't like, I guess, taking advantage of, like the window doesn't have to move down to accommodate the menu items or interface. So that is nice as well. Another thing that I like about this laptop is the keyboard. You don't have the touch bar, which I think is kind of a distraction. I mean, if you like it, you like it. I never did, and maybe that's the pro in me coming out, but. I really love just function keys that are function keys and they're big this year. You can toggle brightness and volume really, really easily. You know, and that's important if you're in video calls and you have to like quickly silence your stuff instead of having to go through the touch interface and slide. And I just, I always hated that. So the keyboard here is really nice. And if you're coming from a, you know, previous gen butterfly keyboard, I mean, this thing is just a joy to use. Let me open up Google Docs real quick and just do a typing test. Or you know what? We'll do 10 fast fingers here. I can show you how fast I can type here. I can flex on all y'all. So you can see how fast I'm typing, even though it's not necessarily super accurate because I am fried. So I, this is a bad time for me. I can type a little faster on 90 words a minute, 86% um, accuracy, but yeah, this keyboard is great. Another thing students might like about this laptop is the fact that it has 16 gigs of RAM standard. I know not everybody understands how random access memory works, but it's sort of like having more desk space available to have quick access to files and stuff. So it just allows you to work on more more quickly or to have more Chrome tabs open or applications open at once. So having 16 gig standard is very nice here. And of course you can bump that up to 64 if you really need it. But I would say most the most anybody really needs is 32 and that's even pushing it. 16 here is fantastic for really most students I would say. I managed with 16 gigs on my M1 MacBook Pro and I did all my creative work there. And then in terms of ports, a student might really like the fact that they can connect an HDMI cord to their laptop directly if they want to plug into a projector or some sort of external monitor without having to pull out a dongle or something. So, you know, you can just plug into that. I have a comically long HDMI cord for when I plug in my camera to an external display. But yeah, you can just plug in your laptop to a monitor, no problem, no dongle, very convenient. And then of course we have MagSafe charging, which is a old feature, but Apple brought it back and acted like they resurrected the dead and they kind of did because they killed MagSafe to begin with, but it's back. Let's not be bitter. Um, here it is. You can plug it in or just sort of snap it on like so. It is a wonderful thing because if somebody trips over your stuff, it's as simple as that. But if you plug in USB-C, which you still can, here it is actually. Um, if you plug that in, if you plug it in, uh, yes, you can still charge just as well, but like 
you can yank your laptop off a table. And if you're spending two grand on this, or even a grand, honestly, this is a little concerning. And this has been a standard for a while, but I mean like Surface has had, you know, a Surface connector for a while. And it's, I'm just glad Apple brought this back because it just makes a lot of sense. <laughs> All right, next up, let's talk about what makes this laptop unattractive to most students. That's my best impression of a frat guy because if I had my hat the other way around, my face would be dark. <laughs> so this thing is heavy. I'm not gonna lie, this thing is three and a half pounds, you know, the 14 inches, and then the 16 inches even heavier, much heavier than the MacBook Air, for example, and even heavier than the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which comes in at three pounds. This is, if I haven't already said it, three and a half pounds. So it's a chonky boy, not only that, it's thick. Everybody that I've talked to at school is like, why is that laptop so thick? And it's not necessarily thicker than the 13 inch MacBook Pro, it's just more squared off. So if you don't like that, then by all means, get a MacBook Air. The MacBook Air is also more comfortable to type on because it tapers towards the edge here. Let me actually put my MacBook Pro down so I don't drop it. If you open this boy up right here, as you can see, this is a lot thinner, which is easier on your wrists, but, excuse me, <laughs> If you open up the MacBook Pro, um, it's a lot thicker. There's a lot more of an elevation difference for your wrist, so you're gonna feel it a little more. So for typing, the MacBook Air is gonna be better. Also too, <laughs> keep like a, um, this thing is a lot more expensive. You know, this is a lot more expensive and you won't necessarily use all of the horsepower. The M1 Pro is for a specific type of user, which I've probably already talked about or I've yet to talk about. If you don't need the processor on the inside, you're the eight core even, you don't need it. The M1 chip, even the seven core GPU version, the cheapest version is enough for most everyday tasks, especially for me, I'm like a business student. The MacBook Air M1 was my favorite laptop for that. So I kind of miss this, I'm not gonna lie. Although I do really love the features that come with this as well as a you know creative professional slash YouTuber slash tech lover. Oh, and before I forget to mention, the 14 inch MacBook Pro gets about 11 hours of web usage, i.e. just casual type usage which is very common if you're doing college work. The MacBook Air, on the other hand, I think it's 17. And yeah, it doesn't have the M1 Pro and it doesn't have a better display and it looks older and whatever, but it's significantly lighter, more portable, and it lasts longer. So keep that in mind as well. Just because this thing is more expensive, a lot more so, doesn't make it better in every regard. But before we continue here, I have a brief message from today's video sponsor, Motion VFX. I bought the new MacBook Pros with video editing specifically in mind, and while they're powerful, beyond short export times and very smooth playback, having clean transitions and effects at your disposal during an edit is super important when creating a professional, marketable video. That's why I use Motion VFX's installer to take advantage of a few of their incredible Final Cut Pro 10 plugins. So far, my favorites include their free MCAM Rig plugin, which allows you to add super cool digital zooms and motion blur into your projects. I also love their M Transition Fade and Synthwave Transitions. They're super dynamic, really high quality, and fit my style of content perfectly. And the fact that they're not only pre-made, but also really easy to implement instantly makes them so convenient and valuable during my editing process. Hell, even Apple mentioned them in their last keynote. I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested in checking these out. But to be more specific, what types of students should take advantage of this hardware? Or better question, who are you and what do you do? Well, the first sort of student that comes to mind to me is a computer science one who's doing app development or game development. And I'm, I'm not even gonna <laughs> pretend to know what goes into that and what the terminology is. All I'm gonna say is the computer science community has had a really nice reaction to these laptops simply because the M1 Pro is a step up from the regular M1 with the MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs of the past year. Um, these laptops are also more thermally sound, they are thicker, and I know that Apple it just improved the thermal design. So, you know, with the increased GPU cores or GPU capability and power and the better thermals here, this is a great laptop to buy. There was a recent tweet where some sort of Android app development company company said that buying you know, $32,000 worth of these laptops is gonna save them $100,000 in the end, you know, in terms of like their business models. So that's pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, if you're a computer science person, this is definitely something to check out at the very least. Um, also too, if you're somebody who does creative work, video, photo, 3D rendering, design, 
the fact that you have that increased power enables you to do more. And maybe you won't make use of all of it all the time, but when you have some crazy project that involves a bunch of layers or maybe some intense 3D rendering or whatever, you'll be ready with the eight core at the very least with 16 gigs of RAM. And if you need the SD card reader, it is definitely a godsend. If you are writing media to an SD card, if you're taking photos or video. Um, last thing I'll say too is the speaker quality here and the audio jack definitely cater to people who do music production or music producing. So if you're going to school for that, this is a great laptop uh, for you as well. Of course, you could always get the 16 inch, which has better audio quality with its bigger drivers or speakers. But I mean, the portability factor here and the affordability here does make this more attractive. But yeah, those are a few types of students that I think would really take advantage of the hardware here. If you are not any of these, um, although I'm sure I haven't listed every student that could take advantage of you know this hardware, but if you find yourself being a more casual user, I mean, if you're a tech enthusiast, yeah, you can buy this. I mean, I use an iPad Pro and I don't take advantage of it, um, but I love the hardware. I have an appreciation for it, so I know what I'm getting myself into. But if this is just a shiny laptop, you know, that's cool. Don't just spend money on it just because it's the most expensive model or a more expensive model. But what about the MacBook Pro 16 inch? Is there any case for a student where this might be the buy? This might be the right decision? Well, obviously there are cases, I think they are smaller in number compared to buying a 14 inch MacBook Pro, which is already smaller in number because it itself is not, you know, a necessity for everyone. But if you need a humongous canvas here, look at, I have two really large windows up here for schoolwork. This is nice, well, this is not schoolwork, but you know what I mean, like this is like Google Docs, we got canvas open here. You have a lot of space here to have a lot of stuff on your screen. So you're not as cramped, you can read more, and maybe you're on the go, maybe this is your only device. Maybe this is your all in all, you know, computer. It does everything for you. You want to have the biggest screen. And also too, in terms of performance, you want to have high power mode. This is a MacBook Pro a 16 inch exclusive feature. It has better thermals on the inside, which allows you to push the processor a little harder. So I don't have any numbers for you as to how much of a difference, you know, it makes, but it definitely should. I think Max Tech has some great, you know, benchmark comparisons, thermal tests that they did. So I'll leave a link in the video description to there. Um, but even though the 14 inch performs similarly, this will perform better longer. It'll also last longer with a bigger battery on the inside. Um, unlike the 14 inch, which has like 11 hours of wireless web, I believe this has like 14 or a little more. Um, so there are reasons to get this. It is really huge though. I mean, this is taking up my entire lap. Um, it's just, it's a gigantic laptop, but if that's what you want, then by all means, buy this laptop. I mean, you don't have a choice if you want, you know, something this big, you're going to have to pay the premium. But as I've said before, though, the 14 inch is a much more refreshing form factor. It's nearly as powerful, if not just as powerful in most cases. It does last a little less long. That's not even how you say that, but the battery life is not as good for wireless web. Um, and um, you might not get the same amount of screen size, but I find it more than enough for what I do for school, but I'm not everybody. And of course, you know, I'm the guy with two laptops. You know, I have one for work and one for school. So you gotta pick one. And in some cases, going big or going home is the way you wanna go, even though you are sacrificing some portability um, for that choice for this size. All right, so next up, let's talk about the eight core versus the 10 core MacBook Pro 14 inch. What the hell does this even mean? Is the 10 core that much better? Is the eight core that much worse? Should you go with the M1 Max? Well, I'll say this first up, if you don't know if you need the M1 Max, you probably don't need the M1 Max. Hell, I don't even probably need it. And I bought that in my 16 inch MacBook Pro with maxed out RAM. Don't do that, especially if you're a student and you don't think you need all that horsepower. Um, the M1 Pro is very, very capable, but it does come in different variants as I just the eight core and the 10 core. So what does that mean? Well, okay, so CPUs basically are the brain of your computer and like brains, they have components. And some of these components are called cores. And they're like, imagine like a person that can do a task. Um, so the eight core uh, CPU has eight of these people, let's just say, let's in the, in the realm of this metaphor, and the 10 core CPU has 10 of these people. So while these people are equally capable, 
um, which is reflected in the single core scores here, which will you know reflect the performance of a single core. Um, if you compare the productivity of eight people versus 10 people, obviously the 10 people are gonna be able to do more. So we have a higher multi-core score here of around 12,600 compared to 9,880. Now, what does that mean to you? Well, a better visual representation of this is with Cinebench, and I will open this up here. This will task the CPU quite a bit in rendering some complex images. You can already see that the 10 core CPU is ahead of the eight core. Like I said, it's like eight people working versus 10 people working. So if you are somebody that is doing video editing or anything involving 3D rendering or just rendering any kind of images, design, illustration, whatever, I mean, and I mean like with complex stuff, not just like drawings and whatever, um, the 10 core is probably gonna be where it's at for you because you have an additional two cores and this does make a difference a couple seconds, but the seconds add up over time and time is money, especially if you are using one of these machines for um, you know work. Another benchmark comparison I wanna do here is between the GPU results, because just like CPU cores, there are less GPU cores. And you can think of GPU cores just like the same people analogy I was talking about. There's 14 here and 16 here, and obviously 16 people are more productive than 14 if they're all individually equally capable. We have a metal score of 35,000 versus a metal score of around 39,000 with the 16 cores. So, you know, for GPU tasks, it's gonna be similar but you know, you have a little bit of an edge here and CPU is very important when it comes to intensive tasks. So again, if you are doing some crazy stuff and you know it vaguely, 10 cores probably up your alley, you also get twice the amount of storage on the inside here, one terabyte versus 512 gigs. But if you want what's happening here and this is good enough for you and you just want the rest of what comes with this and you don't wanna spend you know, more than you need to, just upgrade the storage on the inside for an additional 200 or something when you customize it or get more RAM or whatever you think. You know, you'll save money by going this route for sure and it's not a bad performer anyway. I mean, I used the M1 MacBook Pro and got away with a lot of crazy stuff. So this is powerful. This is just more powerful and has more storage. So again, you might want to go this route, especially if it's in stock too. I mean, if you have to spend more money and you want to get a laptop earlier, that's on you. You know, you spend your money the way you want to. At least you get more power here, you know, compared to this. So there's a difference in the price and this is definitely worth, you know, more money if you need it. So what's the bottom line here? What's my end recommendation after saying all of this? Well, if you are a more typical student, as I've said here, this laptop is not for you. It is not designed for you and you shouldn't spend your money on it. A lot more money for that matter because you can get a MacBook Air for less than $1,000. This thing starts at just a little under $2,000 with education pricing. So for most people, go with that, and I'm actually gonna be doing a comparison between these two to you know push that point home even more. But once again, if you are somebody that would take advantage of the hardware here, like the SD card reader, like the M1 Pro, and you want this and you know you'll use it, then by all means buy it because you will get your money's worth and then some. And in my case, I definitely do because this is a creative tool that I can use to do my work. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful, fun. I'm trying to mix up my style of shooting to accommodate my school schedule and work life and also to make things more interesting. I don't like shooting a roll or talking points or whatever in a single setting. It drives me insane. And I hope that this has been more engaging. So leave me some feedback in the comments if you, if you have any. Of course, if you have any questions too, leave those as well. Leave a like if you want to subscribe for more content like this. Check me out on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm trying to post more content there. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.